and interact with him. I would like to inform that uh, Mr. Antap Bachchan, a superstar of the millennium, has shared his thoughts on this important book through a video uploaded on YouTube. Now, let me introduce today's speaker, Mr. Parmeshwaran Ayer. Currently, he is the global lead for strategic initiatives in the World Bank Water Global Practice, Washington, D.C. Prior to this, he served as secretary to the government of India at the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation from March 2016 until August 2020, where he also led the implementation of the flagship Swachh Bharat Mission. Uh, a former IAS officer of 1918, one batch, I headed the innovative community-led Swajal project in Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand in the 90s has over 25 years of global experience in the water and sanitation sector and has worked in many countries including Vietnam, China, Egypt and Lebanon. A fitness enthusiast, Mr. Ayer also served as a road manager come coach to his daughter and son on the pro tennis circuit during a two-year sabbatical from his professional career. Now I request Mr. Ayer to address the participant. Please, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ashish, and good evening to all of you. Uh, let me start by thanking uh, Professor Ajit Chaturvedi, Director IIT Roorkee, for this very kind invitation to talk to you uh, about a little bit about the Swaj Bharat mission and also about my uh, recent book. Uh, I met Professor Chaturvedi a couple of years ago at IIT Roorkee, which, as we know, is the you know the most prestigious. University for Engineering, particularly Civil Engineering and it's a historic university. And I have a very old association. I was just mentioning to Professor Chaturvedi with Rudki. I used to be SDM in Dehradun uh, many, many years ago when my batchmate uh, Rakesh Sharma was SDM in Rudki. And we used to meet often, either he would come to Dehradun or I would come to Rudki, or we would meet at the exact border of the two districts at Mohan. So it's a real privilege revisit uh, and recall my whole association with Rudki. Uh, again, thanks to Professor Chaturvedi and Ashish and all of you for organizing this. Uh, what I wanted to do today was to give you a very brief uh, summary of the Swachh Bharat mission. Uh, India's, uh, which is one of the largest behavior change uh, campaigns in the world. And uh, about half of my book is about the Swachh Bharat mission. And the other half, which might be of interest, particularly to the younger lot and even, uh, but also to the faculty members, is about my journey in the civil service. I joined the IAS in 1981 and how I, uh, you know, encountered so many challenges, which may all of us face in our different careers. But then I left the, uh, the IAS, went to the World Bank. I started working on water and sanitation. Uh, again, uh, Rutki is, you know, one of the premier institutes in this sector, like in all civil engineering in particular. And then I came back to the government in 2016 uh, after having taken voluntary retirement from the IAS when I was made secretary in the government of India in the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation. And so I did that for about four and a half years. And I, my wife was telling me, you had a rather unusual, a bit of a crazy career. Uh, which also included my being a coach to my professional tennis playing daughter, Tara. And uh, so she said, why don't you write about this book? And so during the lockdown uh, last year, when everything was shut down and I could not travel uh, to the field, because I used to go out at least once a week, if not twice, to different districts, villages, to state governments. And so I had this opportunity of uh, kind of getting... I usually get up early in the morning for my exercise, but I spent two, three hours in writing this book and managed to get a first draft out uh, in about six or seven months. So it was a good opportunity to sort of put down my thoughts and uh, extract all the material from my diaries. So if I could uh, kindly request Ashish to put on the presentation, I'll just take about 10, 15 minutes and be very glad to welcome questions or comments. Thank you.
right. You can just put it on uh, slideshow mode. Uh, can we put it in the slideshow mode, please? You have to. I think Ashish, if you can put it on. Uh, There's a presentation mode, slideshow mode. Presentation yeah. mode. Presentation. Is it in presentation mode? I don't yes, see yes, sir. This is it presentation mode. Okay. Can we uh, right? Can we go to the next, please? If we can uh, kindly go to the next slide. Uh, Ashish, the next slide is required. Yeah. Oh no. The, now it's going to presentation mode. Yeah. 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 So next, please. This is the slide titled with Sigma problem with previous sanitation program. Yeah, can we, can we go to the next slide? It looks like there is the system is slow slightly. Yeah, a little slow. Should I try to run it from here? Ashish, what is the problem? Don't know, sir. On my side, it's okay. So we are doing user presentation. Sure. Achha. So are you uh, trying to go to the next slide, Ashish? Sir, one second. I am trying. Let us see that. Okay. Let me see if I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you know, uh, Kind of standard thing. What was the problem, right? So in India, yeah, yeah Rohit, okay. Rohit, yes, sir. Right. Uh, can you change the presenter and make Mister Ayer as the presenter? Okay. Great. Sir, is it done? Okay, I, I'm not seeing it yet, but maybe it'll come soon. I'm seeing uh, Rohit Prasad host. Sir, I have made you the presenter. Now share option is available for you. You will have to share. Okay, let me just. Uh... Share, okay, let me share. Yeah, now we can see. You can see it now? Yeah. Yes. You have to go to presentation mode. We are, yeah. Got it. I'm just coming back to the beginning of the slides. So. Uh -huh. Here we go. Thank you very much. So uh, you can see. This was the extent of the problem in 2014 when uh, the Prime Minister took up the Swaj Bharat mission. I mean, these numbers are pretty staggering. We take them for granted in India, but when the people look at it globally, you know, they see the extent our population, the number of people who were defecating in the open in India, which was about 60% of the world's open defecators. Uh, number of villages we have in India, districts, states, so it's a, it was a massive challenge. And if you look at the graph below, you will see that sanitation coverage, we're talking of uh, rural sanitation coverage, which was quite stagnant since independence, was only about 1% coverage. Uh, that means only about 1% of the rural households had toilets in 1980. And then that went up to about 39% um, over you know, 35 years. So still fairly slow, but some progress was made. Uh, and then uh, after that, it, it kind of, you know, the, the rest of the story, how it went from 39 to almost 100% is what we're going to tell you about. Now, 
there were some major challenges which we faced, which we called the four S's. And as I mentioned, the first was the scale of the problem. How do you change the behavior? Because the heart of Swajh Bharat was less about building toilets and more about changing behavior, which is a very, very challenging thing, particularly at that scale. And then there was speed. Second challenge, when the Prime Minister had given a five-year window, until now it had been more about incremental increase, kind of drip, drip increase. But speed was another challenge because we had to build about a sense of urgency and get the job done in five years. And then linked to behavior change was the issue of stigmas. So this was a habit and belief held for generations in India. What is known as a wicked problem, very difficult and complex to solve. How do you change that behavior? How do you remove the myth that if you have a toilet in the house, you know, that's impure, etc. And then there was the issue of sustainability. Because even if you change behavior, how do you make sure that people don't slip back into old habits? How do you continue the sustainability campaign? So these were the four major challenges which we faced. So how did we deal with each one of them? First was scale. So Team Swaj Bharat, everyone had to be involved. That was becoming very, very important. And so we had school students, we had masons, many women were, became masons and they were called Rani Mistris in Jharkhand. Swachagrahis were the village motivators. Almost every village had one. All the, all the 2.5 lakhs are punches in India, UP they call Pradhans and in Uttarakhand also then, but these were the elected sarpanches, district collectors who were leading the campaign in their districts. We had young professionals. And uh, so we had over 500 of these young professionals given to us by the Tata Trust. They became the eyes and ears of each collector. So every district almost had one. Uh, they were the innovators, they were the creative people. And then we had brand ambassadors. So we had people like uh, Ashish mentioned, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, we had Sachin Tendulkar, and we had many others who were promoting the campaign. And of course, we had one communicator in chief uh, in the prime minister who used the monkey bath platform and many others to really give his weight to the program. So this, the PM's vision had to become a mission. I think that was really important to create and implement this program in mission mode. So it became important early to have some quick wins. And when I came into the ministry, you know, there was a lot of skepticism. I came in in March 2016. People said, you know, this thing is very difficult. Sanitation is a state subject. And uh, how can we monitor and manage this from government of India when it should be done by the states? So it became important for us to convince our own team that this is not mission impossible. It can be done. When I so in. July 16, you can see there were only 16 open defecation districts in India out of the more than, you know, almost 700 districts. And you can see those were the ones mainly in Himachal, in Sikkim, there were some in, in uh, Bengal, a few scattered here and there. So we decided let's focus on the low hanging fruit. Let's go for the districts, where coverage already high. Hai. Let's get some results. And in year one, we set ourselves a target of 60, 60 districts to become open defecation free ODF. We actually achieved 100. So that demonstration effect by the sort of champion collectors and their districts, it started inspiring the other districts. And then champions were created, whether they were collectors or sarpanches or swachagrahis. So that momentum started snowballing. So that became quite important. Uh, how did we deal with stigma? And Previous sanitation programs, and for all those who are interested in behavioral economics, these are some, you know, uh, some of the some of the experiences we had early in the program on how do you change behavior and how do you deal with stigma. So the early assumption was that if a government gave a free toilet, everyone would use it. But the reality we found out was that it was a product for which there was no inherent demand. So how do you stimulate demand for a product for which there is no, even if it is free? And there was an assumption of rationality. Earlier, all the promotion and the messaging spoke about health and economic benefits of toilets. That 
कि आपके घर में टॉयलेट होगा तो बीमारी नहीं होगी दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग बट द रियलिटी वी फाउंड थ्रू अ लॉट ऑफ फील्ड एक्सपीरियंस नॉन रैशनल मोटिव लाइक लव डिग्निटी डिस्गस्ट एक्चुअली आर फार मोर पावरफुल देन रैशनल बेनिफिट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल टेक प्राइड यूपी स्टार्टेड एंड लेट एंड उत्तराखंड लेटर एंड मेनी आर द नॉर्दर्न इंडिया स्टेट्स he started referring to toilets as izzat ghar a house of pride of dignity and yeah you can see the prime minister laying the last brick in a twin pit toilet in varanasi but you can see the artwork in a tribal area of india where people have decorated their toilets to show that they take pride in that toilet so that became an important one take pride in your toilet then disgust became another important lever of behavior change to trigger change here you can see a swachhagrahi who is trying to bring about awareness about the importance of making the entire village open defecation free gathering the community and giving them an example of how a human hair dipped in excreta and put into a glass of water you can see that on the left side whether anyone would be volunteering to drink that water everyone was disgusted by such an idea how can i drink water in which a hair has been dipped uh, which has previously been dipped in excreta so flies carry uh, you know disease they sit on food and that's why it's important not to spread excreta around in open places and to use a toilet to defecate so this became another important one but the sense of disgust was important even love was created as a trigger so you can see a cartoon which from a annual cartoon calendar with mr sudhir dar had designed for us and this became a theme in rural india so where you know he's got everything but he doesn't have a toilet so the girl is saying you don't have a toilet so i'm not going to marry you so again and this was the theme which some of you might have seen or many of you there was a movie made called toilet ek prem katha Uh, in which akshay kumar made the movie and starred and we use that a lot as a powerful means of changing behavior and you know talking about women's empowerment and leadership so here is uh, i'm trying to see if we can we can play the little clip which gives you a sense of from the movie toilet ek prem katha right so that was quite a powerful scene from toilet ek prem katha but we use that a lot uh, to trigger behavior change particularly in the hindi speaking areas of india so again all these communication tools came together and stigma again uh, important to address you can see on the left side that's a picture you know where we started entering toilet pits to empty them to set an example about how you can be clean by households themselves they don't need other people to come and clean them uh through radio we had a salesman shocha singh went around debunking myths about toilets social media became important because you're targeting different segments of the population so this became important particularly for the younger lot in urban areas of uh, increasing our social media presence and then of course you saw a clip from toilet ek prem katha and a lot of influencers whether the akshay kumar or sachin tendulkar or mr amitabh bachchan anushka sharma they all came out and made them and promoted the message that it is important to have a toilet to use it and so behavior change at scale was done in many different ways now sustainability critical and it's going on even today because one thing we learned from one of the international gurus on behavior change uh, professor cass sunstein who's the co-author of the book 
nudge that once you change behavior, you have to work at it for three to five years to make sure that the change behavior does not relapse. So sustainability we built in from the beginning. And how do you make sure that the village continues to remain that the focus on behavior change? And so therefore, the capacity, the communication, all this is continuing in Swaj Bharat phase two, which is going on at the moment. And but then we also took it to a broader definition of Swachhata because initially for the first five years, the focus was primarily on open defecation free ODF. In phase two, which is going on from 2019 to 2024, it's about also talking of solid and liquid waste management, which was earlier mainly an urban problem, but increasingly now it is becoming rural and peri-urban. So how do you manage organic waste is a program called Gobar Dhan uh, from cattle waste to energy and to organic manure. Plastic waste management becoming very, very important. Grey water management, fecal sludge management. So this again is joined with the Jal Jeevan mission, which is focusing on providing tap water in rural India. So they go hand in hand. This program we designed about a year before I left. And now both the Swaj Bharat phase two, as well as the Jal Jeevan mission, are going on in full steam. We also uh, prepared a 10 year strategy for rural sanitation because the work on sanitation never stops. And so uh, you have to keep at it to make sure that the behavior changes, but also bringing in new technologies where institutions such as IIT Rootki and others have been helping us and we continue to work on how can we use technology to promote both sanitation and drinking water. And now you can see from that map how it changed over the course of the Swaj Bharat. From the left side, that was the status of rural sanitation in India. Most of it was red or brown. And then October 2nd, 2019, the 150th birth anniversary of Gandhiji, when the country declared itself open defecation free. Uh, so many people changed their behavior. So many toilets were built, uh, more than 102 million. But important to stress that there's nothing perfect. There, there, there were gaps. There will continue to be gaps. There will be people who were left out. There will be floating population. So many people say that, you know, the country declared itself open defecation free. We still see people who go out. Now that is, has to be continuously addressed because it's a dynamic situation. But it was a massive effort by the people of India, led by the young collectors and the elected representatives at the local level, which made this possible of course, inspired by very heavy political leadership. Now, this is the impact of the program because we thought it would be important to commission external agencies and not just by the ministry. So the World Bank carried out for three continuous years a rural sanitation survey, more than 100,000 households across the country. They found usage was over 95%. The World Health Organization did a study and found that this program saved more than three lakh lives, particularly of children below the age of five, from diarrheal deaths. Uh, the Swaj Bharat saves money. UNICEF did a study which found that in every ODF village, a house, individual household could save about 50,000 rupees on account of avoided medical fees, real estate value, time savings. So many uh, cartoons were prepared of doctors in rural villages at that time, of course, you know, finding less cases of diarrhea and so on also protects the environment. So uh, there were a lot of positive externalities from this program. And uh, you can see this on the focus on sustainability, another little clip, which Mr. Amitabh Bachchan was kind enough to do to us, the need to continue to work on sanitation because it never stops. Sorry, I'm not seeing the sound on this is not coming, but.
And this is my last slide on the Swaj Bharat mission. There were four key pillars of this behavioral transformation, which we shared globally. And the Prime Minister was given the Global Goalkeepers Award by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in September 19. So the first P was political leadership. This is something which internationally I'm finding even more now that I'm back in the World Bank in Washington working globally on sanitation. There's, you don't find that kind of le political leadership at the highest level for programs such as these. So that became absolutely critical. Uh, public financing. So the government put its money where it had made a commitment, right? More than 20 billion, more than about 1.3 lakh crores were invested in this program by the central government and the state governments together. So that became very important. Partnerships, this could not be, never be a Sarkari program. The development partners, uh, Gates Foundation, the World Bank, UNICEF, but also NGOs, grassroots organizations, civil society, the media, they all had to come together for a Jan Andolan like this. And then, of course, perhaps most important, people's participation. How this program became a Jan Andolan, how people took it on, how communities took it on, how school children took it on, how women led it, so that people's participation was the fourth P. So these four P's we always say are the, the main lessons we learned from this program. Now, uh, I'm now going to talk a little bit about my book, uh, Method in the Madness. And uh, I just wanted to say at the outset that all the authors proceeds from the book go to the Swaj Bharat Kosh. That was set up in the finance ministry. It's a government uh, instrument. And all the funds in the Swaj Bharat Kosh, which receives donations from individuals and corporations and others, they go towards promoting sanitation in rural and urban India. So, uh, so the, my proceeds will all, are also going to that. And uh, now I'm going to talk a little broader about my career, in which, of course, Swaj Bharat figures in the last four and a half years. So uh, there are a lot of pro tips in the book, which are kind of professional tips. I'll come to that a little bit in the end, for, particularly for youngsters who are starting out in their career. Now, it's divided into three parts. The first part is an insider. So my how I got into the IAS and about the first 18 to 20 years of my career. I joined in 1981. And this is about my story in Dehradun, which is close to Rudki, uh, how I was a collector, how I was private secretary to uh, you know, the Minister of State for Defense in Delhi. And then it talks a little bit about uh, my work in the World Bank. Also, I, took a, I resigned from the World Bank the first time, and I became the road manager to my daughter, who was a professional tennis player. Then uh, I sort of came back for one year to UP, went back to the World Bank, and then came back again. So this is a little uh, illustration when I was SDM in Dehradun, and I was going after the limestone quarry mafia, and I had arrested the wrong people in, in the wrong truck. And there was a headline saying how I made a huge mistake, and I plunged the administration into a mess. And this is my stint as a road manager when my, I was saying I'm taking notes when my daughter is playing a match, you know, what is the percentage of first services, how many unforced errors, that was my job. And this is uh, a sketch from coming back to Government of India and emptying a toilet pit in Warangal in 2017. This is a little ex extract from my preparation for the UPSC. I don't know how much of this is relevant for youngsters today, but uh, you might find it interesting to see how I the short time I had to study for the exam, and I got quite lucky. In fact, even I got my father to help me in preparation, so you'll find it quite amusing. And then, of course, so part of it is my association with Mr. Amitabh Bachchan during the Swaj Bharat mission, how I met him. I, I made a lot of mistakes. I misspelled his name. He was you know, quite unhappy about that, but uh, we became good friends later, and you can read about that. And then I come to the pro tips in the book. And there are about two per chapter, and these are all coming out of my practical experiences, what I learned. And some of them I've just put three or four here on this screen. How, if you want to get a program implemented, but other people are implementing it, it's important to get them to be motivated, for them to worry about the program. If, if it's only you worrying about it, it'll be difficult for it to succeed. And 
you know, it's kind of obvious, but always take notes. The first time I worked with Mr. Arun Singh, I walked into his room. He was my minister. I was his private secretary. He started rattling off instructions and I kept nodding my head. And then he told me quite sarcastically, he said, you know, Mr. Ayer, I know you have a photographic memory, but can you do me a favor and take notes just in case you forget something? So I remembered always after that, whenever I go to a meeting, you know, a notebook or an iPad in today's context. And I think for young professionals, it's very important to always come up with new ideas and innovations. And sometimes people are hesitant in proposing it to their bosses because they think they may think it's a crazy idea. But I found you should keep doing it because something will stick, you'll come up with a good idea. And usually bosses and uh, heads of departments and others, they're looking out for new ideas also. And the fourth pro tip is very interesting. This I learned from my uh, both my children who both played tennis from their coach in Washington. He was a world-class uh, tennis player who became a coach from Finland, Vesa Ponka. And he used to train these 40, 50 children, including my two children who are trying to become tennis professionals, all of them. They were training for four or five hours a day. And he said there were some children who were more motivated than others. You find this everywhere, right? In all organizations, there'll be some employees, there'll be some students who put in more effort than others. So what does the teacher do or the coach do or the, or the, or the director or the manager do? Uh, and I've always used this principle, but I learned it from him. So he told me that for all the children who are putting in more effort on the tennis court, who are training harder than others, I'm going to spend more time with them as a coach. So I treat everyone fairly. I give everyone equal opportunities to work, to train, to exercise. But those who put in more effort, who come in earlier, who go later, I'm going to give them more of my time. So I treat everyone fairly, but not necessarily equally. It depends on how much effort and they put in and to, uh, to the entire exercise. So I've always found that very useful. I've tried to practice that myself in all the jobs I've been. And I thought that was a useful tip to share. These are some endorsements from uh, some people who read the book who found it interesting. There's one uh, on the front cover, Mr. Nilekani uh, has said something which you won't find in business schools. This is Professor Bharat Anand from the Harvard Business School who read the book, who found it very useful as a tool for his students. And uh, so this is the book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Hopefully the library can get a couple of copies. As I mentioned, all the author's proceeds go to the Swat Bharat Kosh. And uh, I'm sure some of you will find it interesting if you get a chance to read a book uh, during your very hectic schedule at Rudki. So thank you very much. I'm turning it back to Ashish and to Professor Chaturvedi. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or anyone would like to react. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your nice presentation and sharing your experience. So there are a few questions. So I request uh, Mr. Vahir to please permit us for questions. Please, yeah. yeah, please. And can you uh, can you go back to the, the the usual screen where we can see each other? Okay. Sure. Yeah, unshare the screen. Yeah. Okay. Do I need to do it? No, I think Rohit can do it. Yes, sir. Uh, stop sharing option must be available yeah. at your screen. Rohit, can you do it for okay. him? Okay, I, I think I've done it. Yeah, here we go. Please, please ask a question. Oh, okay, sure. sure. The question is, there are many villages uh, Scores of toilets are there, but there is no water. Therefore, a large majority of scores of these toilets were used for storing fodder, food, and everything other than being used as a toilet. How did you address this? That, that's a very good question, and uh, it's been, you know, it's a it's a question that many people have asked. So let me try to answer that. First of all, uh, just to clarify, you know, this is a part of the communication which we did. Obviously, it could have been better that the twin pit toilet, which was promoted, you know, that was the appropriate technology, which is uh, essentially two pits, leech pits, where 
you know how it works. I mean, I don't need to explain to all of you. You're all most of you are engineering students. But the toilet pan, the bowl, was what we call a steep slope pan, which required much less water to flush because of gravity. So the rural pan typically took a liter and a half or maximum two liters to flush compared to the typical urban pan, which required four to five liters. So first of all, it required less water. And with a couple of mugs, you could actually clean the flush the, and clean the toilet. Now, Bikaner, so in other words, the, you didn't require a huge amount of water. It's always convenient to have running water and to have tap water, which, which is now happening under the Jaljeevan mission. But even districts like Bikaner and Rajasthan, which are you know very water scarce, had become open defecation free early. So it, it was always important to have a water supply, tap water in the households. Again, but that problem is being addressed now. So under the Jaljeevan mission by 2024, the plan is to have all rural households would have tap water. It started uh, during our time, uh, but again, an important issue which you raise. And so it was being addressed by having very simple technology and of course doing extensive promotion because many people felt that you know you needed running water. But it's a good question and it's now being addressed. Thank you, sir. Uh, second question is the fact that well after such Bharat Mission Initiative, government institutions, schools, hospitals, government offices, railways, stations, bus depots have toilet in a pathetic condition, does not inspire an average citizen that government is serious about implementing hygiene toilets. How was this addressed? Yeah. yeah. See, there, there were two initiatives. Uh, the Prime Minister first announced that all institutions, toil all schools would have toilets. So more than 4 lakh toilets in schools were built in that first year. And of course, you know, in public buildings as well. It is a challenge. Now, the, many of these toilets had maintenance issues, as you're mentioning. So it became important for that institution to deal with the toilets, to provide water supply, to keep them clean. There were different models which were tried, including the Sulab Shachalai model in urban areas where people would pay for it. But just to clarify, so it's an ongoing effort. So not easy, it is not solved. But the Swaj Bharat Mission Grameen was focused on toilets in rural households, individual households. So that was our focus. The urban Swaj Bharat Mission was another ministry focusing in urban areas, different challenges, and schools and of course Anganwadi centers had their own challenges. So this was the first time such an effort had been made to deal with it. And no one said it was going to be easy. The individual households in rural areas were perhaps the most successful among it because of the campaign and how we tried to change behavior. Others made good efforts. I think they need to do much more. Thank you. Uh, so next question is, uh, uh, congratulations for connecting WASP with society. Uh, how to underline importance of boss under COVID-19 situation? Also, can you highlight the importance of toilet maintenance, which are constructed under such work mission for sustainability? Look, it's a very good question. And particularly now during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, there were two things which became very important. When the lockdown started, it was absolutely critical that people had toilets in their houses and they didn't need to go out because, you know, it was, and of course, the situation is, is equally bad now, or much worse now in terms of COVID, uh, given the current situation. But uh, the hygiene promotion and hand washing with soap became very, very important during COVID. And those were the key messages which we were promoting under Swaj Bharat. So to that extent, the Swaj Bharat mission had created the awareness, started creating the awareness about the importance of hygiene and sanitation well before COVID-19. Maintenance of toilets is equally critically important. So now under Swaj Bharat mission phase two, the focus is on sustaining that and of course going beyond ODF to a broader definition of Swachata. But having said all that, it has become very challenging over the last year, year and a half during COVID-19 to continue with the messaging, given the other problems which are going on. So hopefully when the pandemic dies down, uh, you know, the refocus on behavior change, on, on hygiene, on hand washing, that will become very important. Sir, uh, 
sir there is one question uh, which is not directly related to swachh bharat mission uh, number of papers being made out but condition of indian rivers are grim how could we address such issues yeah so the, the whole river uh, the river cleanup movement which is under the Minister, department of water resources and uh, i know that iit rudki has a close association with the department of water resources so river rejuvenation is a critical aspect of overall development not just in india but around the world and essentially and i don't need to explain this in detail because you probably all of you know this better than i do there are two sort of basic ways of ensuring river cleaning and rejuvenation the first i say is you know to make sure you have got adequate e flow environmental flow it, there's enough water flowing in the river putting it very simply uh, so you know as there's a very old saying which someone told me is there in civil engineering which all of you probably have heard of the solution to pollution is dilution right so you need more water in the river so that's one critical part the second of course is to prevent the sewage and the other you know the other pollution from reaching the river so under the namami gange project they were they're focusing more on the second part the building wastewater treatment plants in critical stretches of the ganga river this is only for the ganga to prevent it from reaching the river and they're also making some attempts to ensure the flow the e flow of the river now it's, it's not challenging it's taken a lot of effort i think there have been significant improvements other rivers have got different approaches some people say that let's build a, a belt of one mile on either side of the river banks or plantations so that you can also recharge the groundwater because you need to have conjunctive use in there of both surface water and groundwater and groundwater uh, mining and extraction is a major over extraction is a major problem in india so all of these go together it's a major challenge it takes a lot of time uh, and i know that the institute of hydrology nih uh the university of rutki other engineering institutions iit kanpur they're all working together to come up with both technological solutions as well as introducing policy changes thank you sir so there is one more question uh, how being head of the largest behavioral change how can it be applied in election and covid behavior in rural areas i think this principles can be applied anywhere and i think the communication is very very important particularly at a time like this what we learned was that how do we get communication at the grassroots level was the most important for us so we had swachh agrahis these are village motivators locally from the village who were trained in behavior change given one week's training and then they went around in the village and they were communicating critical messages and interacting with the community so people would hear authentic information useful information directly from somebody they trusted on the ground we found that very very important and i think that is critical at a time like this so the swachhagrahis uh, were supposed to be used not just for sanitation but for other development programs and for communication some of the swachhagrahis were asha workers angarwadi workers who were trained and i think particularly now at this time you know spreading the right messages eliminating myths particularly about covid uh, what medicines to take i think that communication is critical and the more you can do it at the grassroots level the better of course you also need to have people who can you know professionals who can give authentic communication so i think it's a combination of both i think that an effort is being made but it's a challenging time and of course more needs to be done one more question is there sir how can a proper medical infrastructure with basic facilities be constructed at the village level given the current situation how can we achieve it are there are any similar technique as used in swachh bharat mission i mean all you know excellent very pertinent questions uh, during this very challenging time now you know today the health infrastructure is under huge strain right and that's that's why you are asking the question and we find that our primary health centers our <coughs> community health centers district hospitals they are all overwhelmed by what is going on so i think that right now it's a crisis situation 
and you know you have to manage a crisis situation in crisis mode you know we've all dealt with uh, you know this is of course it's huge but you know at the local level whether it was law and order post babri masjid demolition in bijapur so crisis situation has got to be managed as a crisis at this point of time but i think that coming out of this some very deep thinking and planning needs to go into how can we permanently strengthen our rural health infrastructure i think it's going to become very very critical i think the government is addressing this uh when they have a bit of time it needs to be rebuilt it needs to be strengthened we need to have wellness centers and that program i think perhaps deserves the top priority going forward thank you sir so there is one more question sir in which part of your life was most enjoyable <laughs> it's a good one i don't know I, i have to i think the two years i spent to be honest as road manager and coach to my daughter tara and my son venkat who were playing professional tennis that was the most enjoyable and fun part of my career where we traveled around the world many challenges winning tournaments how do you deal with losing with winning uh but just spending time with the family which you know you people keep talking about typically the after we retire we say i wish i had spent more time with my family but i did it in between so i found that the most enjoyable part thank you sir so uh, may, may i come in just yes sir there is one more request for professor yes. so so uh, sir good up, good morning for you this is professor deepak khare i have been seeing your works all the time sir really Con admirable work congratulations for conceptualizing this concept and successfully implementing i have been seeing this report i could see that in plains like many states those they are in plains like bihar telangana maharashtra the success is hardly 15 20% however the northeastern state they have really achieved much success around 50 even arunachal pradesh is saying that you have given the target 2024 they said 2023 they will 100% they will achieve so there is a difference that northeastern state they are doing wonderful so is there any means what is your response i think something must have you have done so deepak good question and it look it is true i think there are a couple of things one is uh, let's take sanitation first and i think you are referring now to drinking water that uh, sikkim was it's look it one is the size right there's a size factor there's a cultural factor there's an economic factor there's a political factor so the northeast on sanitation was streets ahead sikkim was already open defecation free it had only four districts there were streets ahead in plastic waste management so i think the culture the ethos of a particular region makes a very big difference so kerala himachal Kerala has got high human capital indicators, right? There's much higher empowerment of women. So when I came in, Kerala was already over 90% covered. Himachal Pradesh similarly. Uttarakhand was doing better than other states. So the first four states in India after Sikkim, which became open defecation free, and you can see how it reflects the socio-economic status of the country of the state were Kerala, Himachal, Kerala, Uttarakhand, Haryana. and then the others followed so you know there is a uh, clearly a connection between that there's a uh, connection there's an administrative efficiency there's a political leadership so the, all these make a very big difference individuals make a difference but more importantly the institutional factors of the state make a difference so it's an interesting analysis as you're saying maybe something which you know uh, iit rudki could take up why do some states do better than others in some cases even though the economic condition was weak they did better sometimes the chief minister took more interest so it was a combination of factors very difficult to get into but it would be quite interesting doing a deep dive and analyzing okay okay thank you sir thank you sir there is one more interesting question in india we are having so many missions like swachh bharat jal shakti school chalao etc is there any need to have integration for holistic achievement to get maximum benefit I look it's a very interesting question and I think development always has to be integrated but one thing we found out over the last 5 6 years that uh, a 
if you do something in mission mode, it has more of an impact because there's a lot of focus. Now you need to bring everything together during the mission. So for example, in this Swat Bharat mission, we had to coordinate with health, with education, with information and broadcasting, with uh, women and child development, with finance ministry. So if we couldn't do it just by doing sanitation, right? We had to galvanize the entire machinery at the district, at the panchayat, at the village level, which brought together everything. So I think you see full integration at the village, GP, gram panchayat, and district level. Sometimes in ministries and departments, we work in silos. So, but the most integrated are the most effective approach. So you're right. The question is, should you have so many missions? I think it was important to have at least some missions because it gave it a kind of focus which was never given before. And many people would ask me, for example, you know, why are you only focusing on this program and not on other programs? And I said, if you don't have tunnel-like vision, it's very difficult to succeed. So sometimes you have to make choices, but I think the mission mode gave development on the ground in the last five or six years. If uh, many of you won't remember, but many years ago, a, a former prime minister famously said that out of every rupee spent on development in India, only 14 paisa actually reaches the intended beneficiary. So this time, these programs, were, some of them were grounded. And I think, so it, it, it's important to have a coordination, integration, and to take a broader approach. But sometimes it's important to focus to succeed. Thank you so much, sir. So I think you have answered all questions, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, now I request uh, Professor Chiturvedi for his final remarks. Please, sir. So, no final remarks. I am very happy to be part of this uh, interesting interaction, uh, which was initiated through Mr. Ayer's uh, presentation. And it was uh, very enlightening in several facets uh, that how much has been achieved through the simple idea of having a focus. And of course, uh, pooling in all the resources at uh, different levels. I'm sure that uh, the entire audience, uh, faculty, students, uh, and during this pandemic, uh, one thing good that happens is that a lot of people are able to attend the seminars. Because in physical seminars, you have to come to some place. Here, you can stay in your office or, or at your home, wherever you are, and you can attend. So I'm sure a lot of people are benefiting over YouTube and over these WebEx sessions. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Mr. Ayer for taking the initiative. Uh, and this book, I think we are definitely going to procure a couple of copies for our library, uh, not only because it will go to Swachh Bharat mission, but also because we want to learn from your experience and see that uh, how you have um, captured your experience. Because as you said, insider, outsider, that kind of thing is really very interesting. It happens uh, very rarely. Uh, we do know that happens occasionally, but the fact that you have gone uh, in, out and in, so that is sort of twice toggling. So that's very good. And we would like to definitely read the book. Um, and uh, equally importantly, we, we would like to have you in our Rurki Water Conclave next year also. So maybe uh, on a fresh topic, um, today morning we have sent the invitation and hopefully we'll, we'll take it up uh, when the, in the month of March, it is 2022 month of March and closer to that, we can have your title and, and we, it'll be a pleasure to listen to you again. Thank you, Mr. Ayer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Chaturvedi and Ashish. And I'd love to uh, participate in that conclave. It's it's a real privilege to have spoken to all of you. Thank you for sparing the time and for inviting me. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So now it's time to say vote of thanks. Now I request Professor Mohanty for formal vote of thanks. Professor Mohanty, please. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, it is my proud privilege uh, to propose a formal vote of thanks to Mr. Parmeshwaran Ayer. Uh, the global lead for strategic initiatives in the World Bank's Water Global Practice and former secretary to the Government of India at the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation to share his deep insights on the Swachh Bharat mission, the largest behavioral transformation, and also his valuable life experiences through his address on the recent book on Method in the Madness, Insights from My Career as an Insider, Outsider, Insider. Uh, sir, your extensive experiences has inspired us and will help us in shaping our career at any stage. Uh, Mr. Ayer selected IIT Ruti for sharing his experience shows 
his immense love and affection uh, for IIT Roorkee. Uh, so we are highly thankful to you and we are really encouraged to interacting with you. Uh, I would also like to thank Professor Ajit Kumar Chakravedi, our director, who has always encouraged us to organize this activity. So we are thankful to you for giving constant encouragement and support to us for organizing this interaction and gracing this occasion. Uh, we are very much thankful to all our guests, uh, the faculty members and students from various departments of IIT Roorkee for attending this lecture. Uh, my special thanks are due to the Department of Water Resources Development and Management for extending all possible help and support for successful organization of this activity. We are also thankful to all the staff and students of the Department of Water Resources Development and Management who have wholeheartedly contributed for the successful organization of this event. Uh, we are also thankful to the media sale of the Institute for covering this event. Uh, last but not the least, we are thankful to one and all those who have directly and indirectly extended the support for the successful organization of this interactive session with Mr. Ayer. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, namaste. Jai Hind. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks.